Hi there, welcome to Cybersecurity Dojo. My name's Dave, and in today's video, we'll be discussing four fundamental concepts that every cybersecurity professional should know. Identification, authentication, authorization, and accountability, often shortened to IAAA. These principles are crucial to the practice of identity and access management. Whether you're logging into a website or managing a corporate network, IAAA is working behind the scenes to keep systems secure and users accountable. In this video, we'll cover what each of these terms mean, how they relate to one another, and why they matter in real-world environments. With that being said, let's jump right in. Let's start with the concept of identification. In cybersecurity, identification is the process of claiming an identity to a system. It's essentially how a user says, this is who I am. Common forms of identification include things like usernames, email addresses, or employee ID numbers. Sometimes even a name tag or a photo badge can serve as a form of identification. But keep in mind, these only say who you claim to be. It's important to understand identification alone doesn't prove anything. The system still needs a way to verify that claim. For example, I could walk up to the front desk of a business and say, Hi, I'm Dave from Cybersecurity Dojo, which would be me identifying myself. But the person behind the desk doesn't just take my word for it. They're gonna to wanna to see some form of proof to back up my claim. And that's where authentication comes in. Authentication is the process of proving that you really are who you're claiming to be. It's one thing to say, I'm Dave, and it's another thing to prove it. Anyone can claim to be Dave, but not everybody can back the claim up. And in cybersecurity, authentication is usually based on one of three things. Something you know, something you have, or something you are. Let's break that down. Something you know might be something like a password or a pen, something that only you or a small group of people would know in the case of shared passwords. Something you have could be something like a key fob, a phone with an app or hardware token. And something you are refers to biometrics, a characteristic that's unique to you, something like your fingerprint or a face scan. We could also combine two or more of these methods and that's called multi-factor authentication or MFA for short. Let's look at an example. Logging into a system with a password, something you know, and entering a code from your phone, something you have. Using multiple factors makes it harder for an attacker to gain access, even if one piece of information is compromised. So now that we've verified who we are, the next question is, what are we allowed to do on the system once we've authenticated? This is where authorization comes in. Authorization is the process of granting or denying access to resources, actions, or systems after you've been authenticated. In other words, authentication verifies who you are while authorization answers what are you allowed to do once you've proven who you are. Let's look at a few examples. Just because you log into a system, that doesn't mean that you have access to everything. You might be able to view specific files, but not edit them. You might also have access to your own account, but not someone else's. Authorization is often based on roles or permissions. This is called role-based access control, or RBAC for short. For example, a regular user might only have access to their personal data, but an administrator could access system settings or other users' accounts or data. And in cybersecurity, we follow the principle of least privilege, which means users should only have access to what they need to perform their job and nothing more. Now, this principle helps limit the damage if an account is ever compromised or misused. So far, we've covered identifying a user, proving their identity, and now deciding what they're allowed to access. But there's one last piece that ties all three of these concepts together, and that's accountability. Accountability means that actions taken within a system can be traced back to a specific user. It's how we hold people responsible for what they do, or sometimes what they don't do in a system. This is where things like logging, auditing, and monitoring come into play. Play. Every login, file access, system change, or data transfer should be recorded and linked to the user who performed the action. This not only helps with detecting suspicious activity, but it also supports non-repudiation, meaning someone can't deny that they performed an action. And if you're unfamiliar with this term, I recommend checking out my previous video where I cover the concepts of authenticity and non-repudiation in depth. And it ties directly into this concept. I'll link that down in the description of the video if you want to check that out. Accountability is critical in environments where sensitive data is involved, such as finance, healthcare, or government systems. If something goes wrong, whether it's a data breach or an unauthorized change, you need to be able to track what happened, when, from where, and by whom. Without accountability, you can't enforce policies, investigate incidents, or maintain trust in the system. 
Now that we've gone through each part of IAAA, identification, authentication, authorization, and accountability, let's talk about how they work together in a real world scenario. These four concepts are very much tied together. They work as a chain of trust where each one depends on the last to keep systems secure. Let's go through a simple example of logging into a secure system. First, you enter your username. That's identification. Next, you enter your password and maybe a code from your phone. That's authentication. Once the system's validated your identity, it checks to see what you're allowed to do. That's authorization. And as you interact with the system, whether that be opening files, making changes, or accessing data, every action is being logged and monitored. That's accountability. If any one of these steps is missing, the whole process becomes less secure. IAAA helps ensure that users are properly identified, their identities are verified, and their actions can be tracked if something goes wrong. It's the foundation of identity and access management, and a big part of what keeps digital systems safe and secure. If you found this video helpful, or you would like to see more cybersecurity content like this, please consider hitting the like button. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.